this is the first episode of the second season of this series called The New Untouchables. Um, and this is, uh, the first season was about the Pecoro Files, and basically they discuss this documentary called The Con, and it's about the corruption of, of Wall Street. And in this season, basically what they're doing is they're showing the results of, uh, corruption, uh, from Wall Street and, uh, the financial industry, housing, and it is, it is criminal to me that this video has 706 views this is one of the most well like well researched profound videos i've seen posted to youtube in a very long time and it hasn't gotten the attention that it needed so please go to real progress in action and watch this series it's so good because i watched this full episode yesterday and i immediately started watching the first season it's really important that people see this because we're talking about this housing crisis, right? It's, so the uh, moratorium on evictions was extended by 30 days. And we talked about this last week on the stream. So now July 31st, that's that's the new day that people will have protections. And, you know, we're kind of we're staring down the face of a barrel with another massive housing crisis. But it's not like they're never hasn't been a crisis it's just been like an ongoing crisis and so what this documentary starts out with is the story of uh this woman her name is cynthia brown so this is an olympic gold medalist and till this day she's living in her car because her house was seized and when you listen to the details that she gives it is absolutely infuriating and this is not like some old story, right? This didn't happen in the 1990s or the 80s. This is a current story where today, as we watch her tell her story in this documentary, she's sleeping in her car in front of her house to make sure that people don't like take anything out of her house and whatnot as she fights to get uh, her house back. And what's also part of this story is the fact that the process of trying to appeal this, get the house back, uh, get her house back, is incredibly corrupt. So uh, the documentary is called The New Untouchables. So this is actually season two. So if you go to Real Progress and Action, um, you can get the details here. And it is, it's shocking. So we're going to watch a little bit. Now I asked, um, I want everyone to go and watch the full thing, but I did ask Steve Grumbine, who's the uh, host here, if I could play a little bit. And he did say yes. So I do want to watch some of this story. Listen to some of the details here. And you will be amazed at what is happening, but probably not surprised. That took the loan out on the home. Let me back up a little bit here. I'm still on this journey of finding the truth as to what happened in, in my case. And it's pretty clear that the person that took the loan out on the home was not myself. In fact, what they've done is they've perpetrated the identity theft in a lot of these cases so that they can get to the equities to the properties. Um, the whole scheme here is to use that straw buyer's name, use your personal information so that they can access the e equities to that property because they never intend to pay it back. They're just gonna get to the equity and then get the property in default and then they're out of there. And then the burdens on that person who owned the home. Now, I don't know how many cases are out there that are um, in, have entered the, the uh, foreclosure uh, form like mine, but I recognize that identity theft is the biggest, the biggest fraud that's going on right now, and the courts are fully aware of it, and they're they're signing and forging documents and then submitting it to the courts. They're not uh, examining the documents. The court's allowing these documents to come in by presumption. You're not uh, able to object or rebut the, uh, the documents. Um, it's basically like, it's everything that you just said. It's, it's uh, so shocking. You know, today I'm still homeless, um, about six or seven months now. And I'm trying to recover and, you know, just uh, participate in court. And it's very difficult without having all the tools I need to litigate to bring forward the fraud. 
there's a substantial amount of fraud being used to take over properties. The actual eviction was unlawful. They forged up paperwork and had the. Let me just pause for a minute. This is people coming to take her out of her home. This is the ring doorbell footage. Does this like this looks like these folks are going to war. They're coming to take her out of her home. That is what is happening right here in the United States of America. So when uh, the host here says that this is financial terrorism, what else do you call it? I think that terrorism is like the perfect word. Imagine if folks showed up to your home when you were fucked over, didn't even have a chance to plead your case in the legal system. And they say, get the fuck out. So since this happened in November of last year, she has been living in her car. It's unthinkable. Sheriffs to sign off on it. But the way in which they did it was so traumatizing. Moving the camera. My ring video caught the experience, which the sheriffs didn't know about. But how they staged it was so traumatizing. It was very hard for me to put together all the ring uh, video links because... Yeah, as Anderson says, the first guy is aimed, ready to shoot. They've got their guns cocked, ready, ready to fucking bust through. They move the video camera footage out of the way so you can't see them behaving like terrorists uh because they know that the footage is stored in the cloud so they don't want to look bad so once they see that they, they try to move it out of the way like this is what you do if you broke into a store and you're trying to like steal you know you, you move the footage away you get rid of the evidence you spray paint the camera or you push it out of the way that's what these are these people are doing to kick her out of her fucking home and this is legal this is legal that's the crazy part right as this happens as she tells her story remember this is all legal it's just something you would never think as an Olympic athlete, you're going to be stormed by 15 to 20 sheriff with military grade AR-15s surrounding the whole house with other deputies in other person's yards. They're breaking security cameras and spray painting the lenses so that they can't be seen so they did spray paint the sounds lenses. to me like what criminals do then they use batter rams to enter their property and by the way they couldn't get to the threshold so the panel of the uh, door caved in so they had to crawl through a hole i mean it's just when you go through the the first link in november 16 it's going to uh, explain everything. They're actually talking about it, how they're going to access and enter the home and screaming through the whole entire house when they know it's only one African-American woman and a dog, by and which they had the animal control out there, which made me to believe they were going to shoot her. Luckily, I had her in my car because they would have destroyed her. It's just appalling um, how many people standing in that home, gloating, laughing, high-fiving and bumping a fist like they had accomplished a, a, a goal because they've been trying to get that home for years, for years. And I've reported crimes against that home for years and not one of them, not one agency took the initiative to investigate the way that I have to find that a serious crime had been committed. I even have the canceled checks front and back. So it makes it easy as to find who the equity stripper is. But see that further gave me a clue who is participating and working together. This is, this is shock. So let me just stop it right there. So, um, I don't even know where to begin. This is, this is chilling. They celebrated. So we saw all these people. They know that it's just one person there with a dog. And she said 15 to 20. 15 to 20 showed up. There was at least like, uh, what was it? Like uh, five or six at first, six on camera. You know, there's more. All of them show up. 
armed with AR-15s when they know one person is in the house. And as soon as they actually kick her out of her home, they celebrate like they just conquered a country. How fucked up is this? I mean, I couldn't imagine going through this. This is terrorism. Now, I don't want to play too much of this because I really hope that you watch the whole thing. But I just want you to get like a little sense of uh, how horrible this is, how prevalent this is, how the 2008 financial crisis is still affecting people today. Bad loans are being given out and how people who have been um, uh, basically preyed upon by the financial industry, they aren't able to even fight for themselves because of the criminal justice system being very racist and biased and uh, all throughout like uh, so this this woman right here is so uh, brilliant, um, but they go through and they speak with lawyers. Uh, they talk to people about the process itself and how they weren't following proper procedure. And um, I like I, this is we're not even scratching the surface, but basically they wanted that property and uh, they took it. And it's kind of like what uh, was referenced here. Right. Um, now, oops, wrong video, because that's another related story. You know, people getting loans for homes that are like six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars. You think that if you if you have the income to be able to get a loan for six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars, you'd get a good loan. But people are uh, being given terrible, bad loans and um, they're getting fucked over and then they get kicked out of their homes. And then the legal process itself is that much more complex and convoluted and fucked up and unjust. Uh, oops, I just messed up the uh, the dog cam. Uh, I'm very animated when I talk, swinging my arms around. But um, let, let's listen to her speak. Illegal foreclosures are happening all the time. Can you put that into context? Well, sure. Um, a little bit about me. I started out as a real estate uh, agent out of college back in 2002. Uh, and then uh, graduated law school in 2006. And so I, throughout law school, I conducted a lot of sales uh, in Prince George's County. And by 2008, by the time I had my law license, the real estate clients were coming back with foreclosure issues. And so, uh, you know, I, I signed up to volunteer with nonprofits in Maryland that were, were trying to stop the bleeding, but no one really knew what was going on. And I took on a few cases uh, pro bono to start, what I found was initially is that the facts didn't matter. And so no matter what fact pattern you had and no matter what challenges the homeowner had, it, it the, the narrative was, was there a loan? Was there a default? And okay, you gotta go. And so I didn't quite understand what was going on at that time. Uh, and I, I do want to mention the, 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 the woman that, um, that Ms. Johnson spoke about that was evicted on December 16th and had to sleep in her car. Mind you, her father, they foreclosed on her father's loan. He supposedly took out a reverse mortgage when he was most likely incompetent with Alzheimer's. And so she's yelling to the court, my dad couldn't have signed this. He had Alzheimer's for the last five years. How could he sign a reverse mortgage? Secondly, uh, with the commercial cell tower on his property, that does not, you're not eligible for a reverse mortgage because that's commercial property, not residential. And so even with the facts in hand, the judges turn their eye. And I love what Miss Mitchell said when she said, who can own property? I'm going to tell you, when I'm in Prince George's County Court, even though there are black judges, even though in our county there are black legislators and black representatives, I feel like three-fifths of an attorney. And I feel like my clients are three-fifths of, of, a, of a resident of, of our county. And so to be the most uh, affluent black county in the, the country, uh, we are still three-fifths of the most rural white county in America, as far as I'm concerned because our judges are programmed not to listen, to turn the other cheek, and they are actually robo-stamping denials, no matter what your fact pattern are. And, and, and so that's what I've found. Um, you know, in our county, I would say that what I, what I see a lot of uh, is the American dream lost 
And so there were a lot of people who sold their townhomes, their condo. They had a lot of equity. The market was booming. They put a $100,000, $200,000 down payment down on their dream home, a $800,000 home built by a reputable home builder. What these home builders said was, use our lender and you'll get a $10,000 credit. And what we didn't know, and I, and I, I noticed, I'll, I'll put the bank out there, it was Wells Fargo on the majority of these new home communities. Shocker. And what happened was what I found is, here are people making six figures. I mean, I'm talking households making 250, 300,000 a year. Why do they have such bad loans in the first place? That was the only loan that was offered to them. And I, oh had someone, I had someone who moved into the same neighborhood. She, she was adamant that she was going to go to her credit union. And they almost wouldn't let her go to settlement. She said, it's because she wouldn't use Wells Fargo. She said, they didn't even all have a 30-year fixed option. She said, well, so, but other homeowners, when you're, when you're given a teaser rate, we can give you 3%, 4%, you know, don't worry about it, or it'll adjust. Well, poor people's loans adjust from 4,500 a month to 8,000 a month. And most people are not prepared to deal with that. And so what? Yes. Even though, even though, you know, people might say, oh, Crimea River, you guys are making, you know, six figures. It, it stole the equity. Their 100000 200000 down payment is gone. All the houses that were worth appraised for $800,000 are now $400,000 on the short sale market. They can't refinance. Oh, and let's not forget, because watching the con did jog my memory about uh, people who held on to those great credit scores, because, you know, all you have it, you've got to keep your credit score. They call their lender, I need help. I can't pay $8,000 a month. You know, we're working people. We, we bring in $12,000 a month. We have two children. We have this, we have that. What can you do? Uh, well, just stop making payments. We can't help you until you stop making your payment. All right. And after three months, then we can it's work right with you. So what happened is people thought they were dealing with their bank and they're dealing with this servicer who represents God knows who. And when they go into default after the 90 days, then... Next thing you know, oh, send in your paperwork. So what I saw as an attorney, and this is still around 2010, only because I had so many people, every single person said, they keep losing my paperwork. You know, I sent it in, and they said they didn't get it. And I sent it in again, and they said they didn't get it. And they need this. And so they're playing this rat race of, okay, I'm turning it in, I'm turning it in. I mean, I'm employed. I, I had good credit. You know, just work with me. Neighborhood bank, but it's not your neighborhood bank. So finally, in court, uh, they have what in Maryland it's quasi judicial, and so uh, it's a, a lot of the process occurs outside of court. You just file the the plaintiff's trustees file and say uh, there was a default, and unless you reach out to the court, they will just railroad you and you'll be out of your house. So assuming you were served, assuming that you challenge anything. Uh, the next step is mediation. Now you go to this mediation, 99 out of 100 times there's no resolution reached. However, turn in your paperwork one more time, and I'm sure we can work with you. And within that next 30-day period, your house is already on the auction block. Next thing you know, your house is sold. Everyone thinks they're alone. I, I thought they were working with me. I don't understand what happened. You called the servicer. Oh, it's out of our hands, our attorneys. So everyone thought their story was was individual to themselves. But when I hear this story 50, 60, 70, 100 times, it's the same story. There's a, like, this is very, very uh, lengthy. It's about an hour long. Um, and then Steve does a really great job at explaining why there isn't an incentive. Uh, because all of this predatory behavior, essentially, is a way that local governments are able to raise revenue. Um, it's just, it's a lot. So, again... The name of this show is The New Untouchables. Um, this is season two. Season two. And I would highly encourage people to watch this because like, this is HBO level quality content and it's not getting seen by enough people. So if you watch it, please be sure to share it uh, because I don't think that people understand how widespread this issue is and it really speaks to how 
embedded racism is in institutions.